my channel my name is Tatiana and I am a nurse resident in the NICU so today I kind of wanted to give you guys insight on what it is like to be a nurse resident in the NICU and exactly what a nurse resident is and a little bit about what I do and I also wrote down some things that I want to go over with you guys so please if you like this video like and subscribe and this is also my first YouTube video so please be patient because I know it's not gonna be the greatest but um I hope you guys really enjoy it because when I was thinking about going to the NICU when I was graduating, there weren't a lot of YouTube videos on the NICU and kind of like what happened, what a resident was and things like that. There are plenty on like the interview process, but nothing specifically for the NICU. So I'm hoping that even though this isn't everything, that it will give you guys kind of like a head start or a little um, insight on what it really is like to be a resident, a nurse resident in the NICU. So first I wanted to talk about the residency and what a nurse resident even is. So I graduated nursing school in May 2019. And um, I think most of the hospitals now, I'm sure there still are hospitals that hire new nurses directly onto the unit as a nurse and not a nurse resident. But I think most hospitals now are leaning more towards nurse residency programs and what those are. Um, they're designed for new nurses, like new grads or um, even nurses moving from one area to another where they've never worked in. A program for them to learn and develop before being thrown out by yourself to work in the unit. Basically what happens in the nurse residency program is that I have a preceptor and then I also have like a class portion. Basically I work with a preceptor when I am on at the hospital and I um I will I'm at the point now where I'm kind of like handling my own patients but at first I would kind of shadow and then do things and then eventually work my way up to more independence. Our NICU is broken up into three areas. So we have an extra care nursery where um, those are babies who are basically ready to go home and get discharged and pretty much healthy, like they're, they're on the way out basically. And then we also have intermediate care where the babies aren't critical enough to be in the ICU, but they aren't healthy enough to go home yet. And then we have the ICU where, where we have our most critical babies. So. A baby in the ECN may be there for holding just for like observation or um, they may have like hyperbilly so they just need phototherapy. Maybe they're an immature feeder so they just need time to um, to feed better before they go home. And the intermediate is more of babies with like IVs, 
so they may need fluids um they may be on antibiotics for like 21 days and then of course icu is for our most critical babies our preemies that are born at like 23 24 weeks or a term maybe term baby that may have like aspirated meconium and they need a ventilator or oscillator because their lungs are severely damaged um babies that are intubated babies that like i said are just just born so early that they need time to develop and they need extra care and extra help to reach that point of being able to go home so i started in the ecn where i learned how to handle babies how to feed them how to change them um how to assess them how to make milk basically all the basics safety everything and in the ecn and the imc you can have anywhere from three to four patients and it taught me time management skills because it's something i'm still working on but when you have three babies to feed and all of your babies are taking po feeds like basically all babies are feeding by mouth by a bottle and nipple you really have to learn how to manage your time because if you have a slow feeder and you still have to do your assessments for your other two babies you're going to get behind and then it gets easier after because you don't have to keep doing your full like head to toe assessment but of course you're still assessing every single time you touch the baby so i was here at first and now i'm um kind of like in the middle a little past the middle of my residency program and now i'm in the icu and in the icu you can have two to three babies even sometimes one if you have a really critical baby but um usually so if you have like two babies you might have a baby that eats at eight and one that eats at nine and you're basically you're doing total care for that baby you're working with the doctors nurse practitioners um you're working with the the parents and the families you're constantly teaching so another part of the nurse residency residency program um, like I said are the classes and we have an evidence-based practice that we have to do so this is specific to your unit so me and the other three girls that came in with me were working on a um, project for a problem in our area in our NICU that we're going to look at the evidence for and try to find a solution to that problem and we have a whole year to work on it and at the end of the year we'll report it or we'll um, present it to our nurse leadership and um also um day and night shift so it just depends on your residency program some people orient on night and some orient on day shift so all of us started on day shift and the farther down we go in our program um the closer we get to night shift so december 1st is when i moved to night shift and i'll be with the preceptor on night shift for a week and then after that i will be on my own like have my own assignment and have a preceptor there with me so she'll have her own assignment and I'll have mine so I have her as a resource if I need anything but um that's when I so basically like three months on day shift and then my last month and a half ish or um, not even really a month will be night shift and then I'll stay on night shift because that's what I was hired for so now for a day in the life of a NICU nurse so for the NICU, as I mentioned before, we have, well, we're technically called the special care nursery because we have three components of our NICU. And walking in, you can't clock in until 6.53. And um, I'm not sure if it's a thing, a weird thing that my hospital does, but basically you don't get paid for a 30 minute lunch. So you can clock in at 6.53 and then you can't clock out until 7.23 because they don't pay for, like I said, your 30 minute lunch. So after I walk in and, and clock in at 6.53, I always go to like the break room. And um, as you can see, the break room, they have bathrooms back there and there's a bulletin board where they put all the important information for our unit up there. Just information about the unit, different opportunities, like um, organization opportunities, things like that they always have up there. So um, once I get in the break room, as you can see, it's, um, it's I mean, it's kind of small for how many nurses we have, but we're not all in there at once. So it can be pretty spacious at the same time. We have two refrigerators. That's where I always put my lunch. And then we have our own lockers. And then I kind of pull out what I need for the day. So I have a binder that they gave us that has all of our information for the nurse res residency program. And I always carry that with me because it always has the most, uh, most important information that I need. And um, I pull out whatever I need in my bag. So I always carry two pins. I always um, grab a Sharpie. I always grab a Sharpie because for like, I always need a Sharpie. I always need one every single day to label milk, to label milk warmers, to label fluids and lines. And then I also grab my scissors. These are actually scissors I got when I graduated nursing school. They handed them to us and they've actually come in handy because I've needed to 
cut a lot of things and sometimes you can't always find scissors in a baby's room. And then another cool thing I always grab is my Neo Glow. And this is really cool because it helps you with starting IVs on babies because as you can imagine, sometimes it's pretty hard to start an IV on a baby because their, their veins are teeny tiny. So what this does is it's a light that turns on and, you know, um, baby skin can be very, I don't know what the correct term is, but it's kind of see-through. But sometimes, on, especially on term babies, it can be a little more difficult, but still if you like use this light, it's a lot easier. So you kind of like press this up on the baby's hand. I'm not sure if it'll work on mine because I'm an adult, obviously, but you press this on a baby's hand and you'll be able to see all their veins and where they are and then you can find a good one and um, start the IV on a baby that way. So it just helps. So I always carry this because I never know when there's going to be an opportunity to start an IV. So I always grab that. And then I'll grab my calendar because as I said, I'm still on my preceptor schedule. So sometimes there's updates or sometimes I need to get the schedule from her. So I always grab that as well. So after leaving the break room with everything I need, I'll also grab my water because um, that's very important. I always get really thirsty and usually I grab a cup of coffee because coffee is life when you're a nurse and the 12 hour shifts. Sometimes I need two cups. I haven't gotten up to three, but the most I've needed is two, but sometimes two or I mean even three is very necessary, especially if you're working three or four in a row and some nurses even work five in a row. After grabbing everything, my coffee, my water and everything I need for the day, then I go to huddle. So, um, huddle is what, I mean, I think most hospitals have, um, their own form of huddle, but for us, we always meet outside in kind of like the lobby area before going in the, um, the special care nursery and the charge nurse from the night shift tells us how many babies we have. So let's like, I think the last time I was there, there were 40 babies. So we were almost not at capacity. I think we still had maybe like 15 more beds open, but we, we had a lot of babies. And they tell us um, what it looks like in labor and delivery. If there's any expecting um, mothers or like any babies coming. Or um, if we have like an emergency come in. If there's like she'll tell us if there's like twins, like 34 week twins back there. But she's already ruptured and you know she, she's telling us what's going on so we can know what to expect. Even though you, you can never expect anything in the ICU because babies come when they want to come. And um, you can never really predict because sometimes there'll be a cold story. There might be a mom rolling in who ruptured and, and they rushed her to the, the hospital to have her baby. So, and we call that a cold stork. There's sometimes cold stories in the OR. Sometimes there's cold stories in like the lobby if like a mom's water breaks. So um, we're always on the lookout for that. I think the most admissions that we got in a day that I've been there is four. And that was a very, 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 very busy day. So after huddle, you go to report. And you get your report for the day from the night shift nurse because I'm on day shift right now. And um, you find out who your patients are from. Like the charge nurse, there's always a sheet that has all, all of you, like your name and then the patient's names under your name for who you'll be taking care of. So now that I'm in the ICU, I have, uh, I've had three patients, but most of the time we have two. And if you have like a really critical baby, like I said, you'll have one. And the first thing I do after getting a report is planning my day. So... If I've had the babies before, report goes by like really, really fast because it's just updates. But if I've never had the baby before, then I'll get baby's history and mom's history and then any tests, any updates, anything special going on. And um, after that, like I said, I'll plan my day. So if I have two babies, I'll probably have a baby eating at eight and a baby eating at nine. Now I'm gonna show you a baby's room. And um, basically this is a NICU room. There's also a giraffe bed. So most of the time in the ICU, um, they're in giraffe beds because they need temperature control. So, um, like I'm showing here, you can control the temperature of the bed so it can heat the baby up or cool the baby down. And the baby's on a skin probe so you can see what the bed is set at, the baby's actual temperature, and you can also see the environment, the environment's temperature, sorry. And the bed itself is smart, so if the baby gets too hot, the bed will cool the baby down. Or if the baby gets too cold, it'll warm the baby up. And we also have IV pumps and syringe pumps. We just moved to Alaris, which is shocking because I know like literally every hospital in the United States has Alaris, even the ones on TV. But um, but yeah, so these are the IV pumps that we use to administer medications, IV meds. And then also um, we have a neonatal stethoscope. And this is so cute. It's, it's really small because if you try to use an adult stethoscope on a baby, it's going to be too big. You're going to hear everything at once, their heartbeat, their lungs. 
it's just not going to be as clear so the mini one allows you to be more precise on what you're listening to so you can hear maybe a murmur in the baby's heart and you can get really a really good listen to the um breast sounds of the baby and in the icu we actually have lit have the litman stethoscopes which is really nice so um now i'm going to show you guys the drawers of um that we have in the baby's room so in the first drawer it's kind of like the miscellaneous drawer it has everything you would need so there's tender foots and a tender foot is basically um, what we use for heel sticks on babies to draw labs so we have those in there we have alcohol arm boards when we're starting ivs um we have like the smaller they're not called tender foots maybe they are but they're, they're smaller um like a, basically a smaller tender foot that we we'll use for IQ checks for checking the baby's glucose or blood sugar and then we have um gauze we have little lab tubes that we use for collection of the blood that we send down the lab and then um, like 10 probe stickers, basically just a bunch of miscellaneous things you may need. And then the second drawer is the respiratory drawer. So we have like normal saline in there for suctioning. So like I said, there may be intubated babies, so we might have to do endotracheal suctioning and that's when we'll use the normal saline. You can also use the normal saline to suction a baby's nose. And then um, there's also like the suction catheters that you put on the actual suction setup that we change out every day. Um, and that's the respiratory drawer. And the third drawer is mostly just feeding syringes and milk warmers. So that's kind of our feeding drawer. And um, we have babies ranging from all different types of feed. They might be getting like two cc's of food or of milk. So we have like those have many feeding tubes in that drawer for them. And then there might be a bigger baby who's getting 60 cc. So we have like the huge syringes for them. And then in the last drawer, we have IV syringes and we mostly use these for like drying up meds. And um, sometimes we'll use them for like collecting blood when we start an IV and we have to send a bunch of blood down to lab um, and different things like that. So when working in the, the NICU, um, you're doing total care for your patients. So you're working with um, radiology, you're working with doctors, nurse practitioners, social services, you're working with the families, moms, dads, you're teaching, you're getting the babies out of the bed. You're, you're doing total care for that patient. And sometimes you'll need things out of the storage room. So um, here's our storage room. So I'm just going to show you guys a couple of things. Um, so this is a snuggly and this is what we use to give like baby boundaries, babies boundaries. And then um, these are like admission packs. So it has wipes, hairbrush, a hairbrush, and um, shampoo. Um, we also have sterile gloves for sterile procedures, obviously. And then we have, um, oh, this is so cute. This is one of my favorite things that I saw when I was first started working in the NICU. It's called a wee thumby, which is like a preemie pacifier or preemie passy. And I showed you guys that one versus a regular, which is the green one. Um, the green was just larger for like our term babies or um, just our bigger babies, but the preemies are so small that they won't be able to fit that big pacifier in the mouth. So we have the little mini ones for them. Um, we also have a, an area where we warm up blankets. So if we're pulling a baby out that's in an incubator for mom or dad to hold or grandma or grandpa, then we wrap them up. We swaddle them in sometimes warm blankets and we put one on top. Um, and of course you can get gloves in here, diapers, and I also wanted to show you guys the different, the different sizes of the diapers because when I first saw the diapers that we use for our micro preemies, I was in awe because it is so cute. So as you can see, this is a micro preemie diaper. It is tiny. It's our P2 diaper compared to P1. So we have P2, P1, newborn, and then one. So P2 is the smallest one we use for our micro preemies, like our one pounder babies or less. And sometimes though micro preemie diapers can be too big because our babies are just so small. And then we have P1, which um, is kind of maybe like a two pound baby, three pound baby. And then we move up to newborn, which might be like four or five pound babies. And then of course, like one, though size one for babies that are pretty big, maybe like seven, eight, nine pound babies. And if yes, there are big babies in the NICU too, because some babies are just simply sick. So, um, moving on from the diapers, we have feeding tube extensions because sometimes, uh, well, most of the time in the ICU, our babies don't PO feed, they don't feed by mouth. They have OG tubes placed that go directly from their mouth into their stomach and we feed them that way. So we have different size OG tubes. We have, um, six and a half French, five French and eight French and eight French being the largest. And we usually like to use those on babies that are on high oxygen requirements because we're able to vent their stomachs that way and get give the air a way to escape so that their stomachs don't blow up. 
Um, we also have blood pressure cuffs, and I want to show you guys this too because this is something that's really cute for our one-pound babies. The cuffs, I think, that we had branched from sizes 1 to 4. I didn't see a 5. I'm not sure if a 5 exists, but um, the smallest is a size 1, and I uh, wanted to show you guys this one because it is so tiny. It's so cute because we use this on our one-pound babies. Their legs are so small, so we have to have tiny blood pressure cuffs for them. And then we usually use like the size 4 blood pressure cuffs for our pretty big babies, our term babies. And then um, I'm just showing you guys um, the setups for like suction, suctioning. So you have like the canisters, the um, tubing, things like that. And then we also have nipples for our bottles, which we really don't use much in the ICU. But of course, sometimes there are babies that eat. Um, we have the preemie nipple, which is the green one. And it's just a slower feed nipple. The milk comes out slower. And then we have like our standard or regular nipples. Um, mostly like term babies can use or babies that have good um, coordination with their suck and swallow. We also have procedure trays because there are procedures that are done at the bedside in the ICU or in the special care nursery. So maybe like a lumbar puncture or um, a pick line or circumcision. We use the procedure trays for that and those, um, those are like sterile procedures. And then we also have like the resuscitation masks and everything. So this is just our storage room and a couple of things that I've shown that we have there for our babies. Now, um, something else that's unique to the special care nursery or the NICU is making milk. So we either, we have babies that are on formula and then we also have babies that are on breast milk or donor's breast milk. So what's cool um, about the NICU is that we have the opportunity to do that because obviously our babies drink milk and um day shift makes milk for night shift and then night shift of course makes it for day shift i have graduate feeds or these are the bottles so you just put we usually put caps on them but you can just put a nipple on there and feed the baby directly from this of course we have syringes for babies that are on two feedings that aren't eating by mouth and then we have the smaller feeding syringes for baby, for babies that are only getting a small amount and then um this is the human milk fortifier that we use to change the calories in our milk and we have Similac and Infamil, and Similac is usually used for our acidotic babies, and Infamil is for babies that aren't. So, so um, last is the greatest thing, contraption ever to be created for NICU nurses. And um, basically this is, you. Uh, I'm not sure what the name is, but you put it on a bottle, and you can use it to pull the milk up in a syringe. Because usually if you don't have this, you have to take the plunger out and you put the little stopper on the end. You pour the milk in, you put the plunger in and you flip it upside down to push the milk in to the top. And sometimes if you're not careful, milk can end up on the ceiling, on your clothes. Like you'll go home with breast milk all over you. So this is the best thing ever invented for any nurse. It makes it so easy. We, um, of course, have a freezer where we freeze our milk if we have extra milk because we don't want it to spoil. And then once that's done your um, giving report to night shift. And like I said, you're either giving a full report if the person has never had the baby before, or you're giving an update, which is personally my favorite because it helps you get out at 7.23. But here I'm just showing, it was a very good day because I was able to clock out exactly at 7.23 and um, walk to my car. And at my hospital, you um, can't park at the hospital unless you're working on a weekend or night shift. And this just happened to be a Saturday that I was working, so I was able to walk straight to my car. Okay, so I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video and I hope that it gave you some insight onto what it is like to be a NICU nurse and also a NICU nurse resident. And um, I just wanted to tell you guys, if you're thinking about going into the NICU or maybe something with like pediatrics, I highly recommend it because I leave every day with my heart so full. Even though it is very difficult and it is very demanding, um, anywhere nursing is, nursing is a, it's a hard job. So, um, of course, there's no romanticized part of the hospital. Nursing is hard, but the beautiful thing about the NICU is that I leave every day with, like I said, my heart so full when I get to see a parent hold a baby um, and smile because their baby smiled at them for the first time or a parent's happy because their baby gained maybe like 90 grams and went from uh, one pound and 10 ounces to one pound and 11 ounces or 12 ounces. Um, and just to see like a baby get discharged and go home for the first time with their families. It's just, it really is an amazing feeling when you see babies develop and, and grow and come like start out as 23 and 24 weekers and eventually go home and go with their parents. It really is such an amazing feeling. And I'm really thankful and I'm really blessed to be in this field. And I would recommend it to anybody who is interested in working with babies. 
and we also have a really cool thing called the preemie party every year so this would be my first preemie party in december and they have it around christmas time where the um, babies who were in the icu um their parents can bring them back for the nurses who took care of them to see them and it is just an amazing thing that i i am so grateful for i, I can't wait for the preemie party this year because it'll be my first time being able to see babies that i took care of that went home and seeing where they are see them be chunky and and walking and smiling and of course I'm not um I haven't been there long enough to see them um the the ones that come that are in high school and college but it's still going to be an amazing experience to see so I'm hoping that I give you guys kind of an idea of like I said what it's like to be a NICU nurse resident and um if you guys enjoyed this video please um like and subscribe and please be on the lookout for more videos um, I may do more nursing related content depending on what you guys want and I also want to do more like lifestyle vlogs and um, different tutorials so um, just be on the lookout for new videos and like I said like and subscribe and thank you guys so so much for watching and leave comments I'm also going to leave my Instagram and um, my handles down below so if you have any questions feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you guys have so like I said thank you again for watching and have an amazing day or night